Hello and welcome to this deep dive into how you can use Foreman and Catalo to successfully manage CentOS stream servers. In this video, I'll give a brief introduction to Foreman and Catalo, then demonstrate end-to-end -end how you can manage the entire content lifecycle of your CentOS stream environments, and finally, I will show you how you can provision CentOS with Foreman. In this video description, I have added links to the corresponding documentation for each part of the video and also a link to our community forums where you're welcome to join us and ask for the questions. You can also reach out to us at the Foreman channel on Freenode IRC. Before we begin, I want to quickly introduce the challenge that CentOS Stream presents for your infrastructure and how Foreman and Catello can help. CentOS Stream is a continuous release of CentOS Linux. Because it does not have minor releases, this can prove challenging for maintaining the stability of your infrastructure. For example, every time a server is updated, it can end up with a different set of packages. In this video, I will demonstrate how you will remain on full control of your CentOS Stream infrastructure using Foreman and Catello. First of all, what is Foreman and Catello? Foreman is a complete lifecycle management tool for physical and virtual servers. We give system administrators the power to easily automate repetitive tasks, quickly deploy applications, and proactively manage servers on-premise or in the cloud. Thanks to its plugin architecture, you can extend Foreman in a multitude of ways to suit your infrastructure's environment. For the purposes of this video, we'll focus on using the Catello plugin. Catello brings the full power of content management alongside the provisioning and configuration capabilities of Foreman. Catello provides management and synchronization of YAM, Debian, Puppet, and Docker repositories, snapshots, content views for reproducible builds, errata, and security patch management. This video assumes that you have installed Foreman with Catello. For more information about how to do that, check out the link to the Catello manual in the video descriptions. The versions demonstrated in the video are Foreman 2.3 with Catello 3.18. So uh, before we dive into setting up uh, CentOS 8 stream within Cotello, we'll need to uh, find the directory or the repository, upstream repository we'll be syncing from. So this is uh, mirror.centos.org slash CentOS slash CentOS slash CentOS, sorry, 8 stream. And here we have two directories, base OS and app stream, and we need to copy both the URLs because um, in CentOS 8, the um, base OS only holds the, the minimal system. With uh, It's also uh, what's called Kickstart tree. It uh, has uh, bootable images, uh, while upstream contains all the rest of the packages and modules itself. So. Uh, themselves so uh, if you go to base OS we'll be you know showing everything on x86 64 and OS this is the URL you want to save into clipboard as well as uh, app stream uh, 86 64 and OS as well so what we have here is a Catello 3.18 which is the latest version stable version running on Foreman 2.3. In order to um, synchronize content, uh, CentOS 8 stream, we'll need to create one um, thing which is called product. So if you go to content products, here you can create a product using this button. I gave it a name CentOS 8 stream. Every time you see a label, uh, because Catello integrates with backend systems, uh, Pop and Candlepin, uh, the label is used for that integration. So once you create a, um, an entry, you can change a uh, name later, but label can't be changed. You need to delete the whole thing. So make sure that the label is something you, 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 you want. Uh, because that's the part of URLs and things like that, so you, it, it can't change once you create that. You can also, each product can have a sync plan. You can create a sync plan using this button. That's something like cron job, so if you want to sync weekly on, on Sunday, you can then do this. 
you can then manage sync plans in content sync plans as well. So I've already created a product here, CentOS 8 Stream. Once you create a product, product is basically a container for repositories. You need to create repositories here. So you do this using this new repository button. You give it a name. I suggest CentOS 8 Stream Base OS for the, because we'll have uh, two repositories, Base OS and Upstream. Type it will be yum. Catella um, Supers as also Debian Ubuntu and also uh, Puppet uh, containers uh, and arbitrary files. We can restrict this one to x86.64 and uh, to press Linux 8. And here you put the upstream URL. Um, so for base OS, it's uh, slash sensor slash eight stream base OS. Please don't use the official upstream mirror, mirror centers, or use the closest mirror you have. Um, and then if you scroll down, the important flag is download policy. By default, it's set to on demand, um, meaning that when you synchronize a content, um, Catello will only download metadata, which is, um, I think, 30 megabytes or something like that, very small chunk of data, but it won't synchronize RPM packages. These will be synchronized on demand. Every time a system does the yeah, install or yeah, um, update, uh, it works like a transparent proxy, basically. So the RPM will be downloaded, saved into uh, into backend system, uh, which is called Pulp, and then the system will get the, the RPM from there. However, if you want to download all the packages, for example, uh, branch office with a poor connection, something like that, you can do in immediate download policy and that will immediately download all the RPM packages. Please know that every single CentOS uh, repository is about 20 to 30 gigabytes, I'm not sure. Um, if you have multiple versions, it can go um, in a while, so make sure you have enough space. Of course, this will work for CentOS 6, 7, basically any any uh, enterprise Linux. Uh, and the last thing you want to make sure it's ticked and it's turned on by default is published by HTTP. You want to, to have the bootable kickstart tree available via HTTP if you want to do uh, PC uh, based provisioning, so basically provisioning over the network. So I'll cancel that because I've already created both base OS and AppStream repositories. So I'll click on base OS, for example. As you can see, uh, it is a name, it's a type yum. So once you have created both repositories and you want to synchronize the content, so you go back to the product repositories, you tick both and click synchronize now. This will create the metadata to synchronize and recreate metadata for all, both repositories. The initial sync and metadata creation takes time, roughly about half an hour for each uh, repository. You can also watch synchronize status in the content sync status page here. You can watch the progress. There will be progress bar here and you can initiate, initiate the synchronization of, again from here. When you synchronize uh, or after you synchronize a content, new operating system will be automatically created. Here's a little bit weird, weird name, center underscore stream dash eight. You can change it, however, the name must not have uh, spaces or uh, white space. The description can have, so the description is that's what you see on the on all the pages, so you can rename this. As you can see, it will automatically you know, associate architecture. We've gone into details of provisioning or what's in what's partition table, what's, what's template. But basically, if you, I will show how to create a, a provision new system using Foman, so just make sure that there is start default partition table, it will be automatically selected for you, as well as templates, all the templates 
uh, will be pre-selected. Uh, this might look scary, but for you know simple Pixie workflow, you only need to have provisioning template and Pixie Linux or Pixie Grub template, depending if depending if you're uh, provisioning EFI system or BIOS system. So that's provisioning. Uh, so that's the operating system. Now the next step is those lifecycle environments I was talking about in the beginning. So basically you can think of environment as a as a container or maybe a directory. Um, it is uh, uh, it is a entity you register clients, let's say let's say these are uh, servers, central servers too. So I've created test environment and production environment already. Just I uh, just use the name a new button and then give it a name again label you can't change afterwards. And then prior environment is an environment from the content flows from from from, from the content it's being promoted. Typically you want to create a chain of environments. There's one environment that's always there and that's called it's called library and every new every single product uh, that you synchronize goes into library by default. So basically the way it works is when you synchronize um, all the content uh, it goes to library and then from there you can create a snapshot of content. Let's say you synchronize on Sunday and every Monday you create a new snapshot. And then you can promote the snapshot into test environment. So you make sure that all systems that are registered or you know consuming content from test environment see all these updates. Once you tested everything on Tuesday, Tuesday every week we can promote the content to production environment and apply the updates in a controlled manner. So that's how it works. So make sure you create, a, typically you create a test production or test pre-production production. You can even create multiple paths. Uh, so like fast track path, library directly to production or normal path, uh, library test production. I won't go into details how to create environment paths, multiple environment paths, or work with, <coughs> with these <clears throat> in this video. Make sure you start with the easier one first. Now, if you want to create a snapshot, in Catello terms, this is called content view. Content view is essentially a snapshot of, of repositories of a state of one or multiple repositories. I already created a CentOS 8 stream all. Again, use the new button. It's just a name, basically. I won't go into details about composites, about dependencies and, and filtering packages. So just don't um, check these if you're starting. I've already created, uh, sorry, I've already created CentOS 8 stream all content view. By all, I mean it contains all the packages from both repositories, uh, base OS and AppStream. Could even create a, um, a repository that contains multiple repositories, like let's say Stream, all and uh, with Apple, Apple. So that would be CentOS 8, Stream plus uh, uh, Apple 8, things like that. So you have a multiple content views, and you can register your system to any content views you want. And once you have that, once you've created a content view, you want to go to yum uh, content uh, tab repositories. And in here, you want to click on these app stream and base OS and click on add. So you, you, you will see them here, click and click on add. I've already done that. so. I see them as uh, in on the list remove uh, tab instead. So make sure you have both uh, repositories here. Uh, so now we have a content view created. 
basically a snapshot. So after we sync uh, all the content, we want to snapshot, the, 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 we want to freeze. And this is the, the most important feature of, 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 of Kotlin. And the reason why I'm recording this video is that uh, using this button, when you publish new version, you're creating basically a snapshot. It's very nice because then you can promote and test the content in control manner. So um, I've already created three versions. Every time you click new version, it will increase the major version number here. We won't go details on how to actually increase minor versions. You need multiple path, paths for that. Uh, we won't do this. So let's say I've synchronized and it's you, it's Monday. I want to publish new version. You can give it a you can give it a, a description, whatever you like, and then click on save. And this will create a new snapshot of all the content we have here. That is CentOS 8 stream, base OS and app stream repositories. As you can see, all the content automatically goes into a library environment. That's what I say. I was saying. So right now, this what we have is all the servers that are registered or consuming content uh, from production and this environment, they see version three snapshot. So that's older. That's let's say from the last week or I have a Wednesday updates here. Um, but you can also register systems to library if you want. Those could be non-critical systems or testing systems or whatever. You know, once this is done and this has been published successfully, as you can see, now if you do yum update on these systems in this library environment, you will immediately see all the updates. So you can actually perform updates. Now you can use Foreman. Um, it has a remote execution feature to do that. Or you can use Ansible, Puppet, whatever as you. Now, if we are happy with uh, with uh, uh, initial testing, we can promote this version 4 from library to test environment. We can do that using promote button. So we are promoting version 4 and we will we'll promote uh, to test environment. Again, we can do a description here. Uh, so um, creating a new version and or promotion only takes a couple of seconds for, um, you know, CentOS, uh, which is a not big repository uh, at all. It's just, you know, 8K packages. As you can see now, all the testing servers are, have the updates uh, from version four. But production systems are still running. Uh, still, they will still see all up the story. Sorry, all the old, old updates, updates from the last week, from the version three. And this is the the uh, most important feature of Cotello here that can help you managing CentOS stream packages and updates. You are controlling when your system see the updates. That, that's also uh, that, that also applies to system you want to provision. If you want to provision a new production server, you can do it using either Foreman or manually. You just make sure that you use the correct environment and then you can provision server um, with all their version of, uh, of, of updates um, until you know and you can, you can hold on on uh, some uh, some updates and things like that. And there are additional features like filtering packages. You don't probably want to allow your uh, users or customers to see some packages, to even install them and things like that. But we won't go to, into details. Now, before you can register, you can, you know, you can consume content from an environment. Um, you need to enable, you know, configure basically YAM by, because by default, if you install CentOS 8 stream, Yum will point to mirror.centos.org and will have all the packages available. It won't use, of course, your your Catella deployment. What you need to have is uh, a tool called Subscription Manager. And this tool was built for Red Hat customers. Uh, it ships with Enterprise Linux. However, it is also present in uh, CentOS. 
Um, however, it, it has no use if you're using CentOS without uh, Catello. However, once you have Catello, you use this tool to actually register the system to Catello and then the subscription manager will also configure all the YAM repositories that are necessary in order to consume the correct content. Um, in order to do that, you need to either call subscription manager with the correct flags, or there is a shortcut, there is a, there is a helper, which is called activation key. Activation key is just a string, a label, or a key. You create and associate all the uh, important bits, that is a content view and an environment you want to use, and then you can just um, uh, call subscription manager dash dash uh, activation key uh, with, uh, with the string and it will automatically register the system to the particular environment. So you create an activation key by using the new button, give it a name, make sure that unlimited is checked because there are no limitations when, when using uh, Cotello with your own products. And select the proper environment. I've already created a, th a three um, an activation key, sent us at eight stream all test production and library. So let's say production. And here on this page, you can uh, see the, the command that's needed to register an existing system to this uh, environment. So that's subscription manager register. Uh, you need to provide organization because Cotello is multi tenant application. So you need to have at least one organization when you uh, install this. Uh, um, in my case, it's my org. It also has the locations, but you need to do, you don't need to specify those for activation. Uh, sorry, for uh, subscription manager. And now you provide activation key. Uh, once you create all the uh, three activation key, all your activation keys, you make sure that uh, the subscriptions are attached. Although, you know, this term is uh, used because the activation, sorry, activation keys and subscription manager uh, are used by Red Hat in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And to consume Red Hat Enterprise Linux, uh, you need to have a, what's called subscription. And we can add a subscription here using this uh, subscription add, uh, send us stream. It's unlimited, so we can add as many as subscription as well to this particular activation key. So now uh, you can actually subscribe those systems uh, to this uh, activation key, uh, thus uh, environment, and it will work as expected. Okay, and the last thing I would like to show you is to create a to provision a host. So if you go to hosts, all hosts, um, um, Foreman can um, provide um, management of uh, network money, um, uh, services like TFTP, DHCP, DNS, and things like that, and can um, help a lot with uh, uh, provisioning uh, servers or systems. Uh, it also allows uh, additional workflows like discovery, mass provisioning, boot disk on systems or networks where you can't use PCC or DHCP and things like that. But for simplicity, let's create a, a typical uh, networking boot um, host that will install from network. So create a new host, automatically create a, some random name, organization location must be there. And let's say this will go into production environment. We want to use this content view. And we'll be installing from Catello server itself. Uh, Catello and, and Foreman is a fully uh, multi-tenant federated uh, application. So we can deploy multiple um, instances on remote sites or remote data centers. And these are just, these connect to the main uh, instance and they are referred as uh, smart proxies or Catello capsules. But in our case, we only have one uh, instance that is this server, so we won't be, um, uh, we can't select the other content source than the server itself. 
However, you can create a multiple um, proxies or capsules and then have your content um, and synchronize over the network to these destinations. So uh, clients, the, the, the servers are closer to the content. So they, you know, you, you save bandwidth. We won't be using Ansible or Puppet. So I'll skip that. Operating system x 664. I need to select the proper operating system, which is this weirdly um, uh, named, but you can change that as well. Make sure you have a synced content uh, you know, radio button here. If you select all media, that means you won't be using Catella, you want to use you know, the system to directly connect to the installation repository, that is mirror.centos.org. We, we don't want to use that, we want to use synced content instead. CentOS 8 uh, stream specifically. I won't go into details of what partition table or pixie loader is. Uh, you need to set some root password, and, um, but uh, we, won't, we won't go into details. Uh, here in this video. Fill in the MAC address of ProPuning interface and select some domain and subnet. Uh, Foreman will automatically pre-select a free IP address if you have a DHCP management setup. Last thing to do is actually associate this uh, uh, ProPuning host or this host that's going to be ProPuning with a particular environment which is You do it using host parameters, KT activation keys, and here you specify uh, the activation key, and that's it. So here we have a new host, now we can turn it on. It is uh, now in the build mode, meaning that uh, when you turn on this host and boot it all over the network, it will boot into the installer and start installing. It will you know, uh, fetch the installer, Anaconda and Anaconda will then fetch the what's called provisioning template. We can review it and this is what's called kickstart syntax. As you can see this is actually the URL of the of the repository that this host will use. Slash pop slash repos organization name then a, a live slack environment then content view and then product name. Um, I want to show that if you've provided the kt underscore activation underscore keys, you'll see these two lines. So this makes sure that the, the, the system uh, configures the connection to the Cotella server. This is the first uh, command. This actually installs an, uh, an RPM that contains an X509 certificate and server certificate. Uh, and then it will perform a subscription manager register command. In Foreman, if you have installed Cotello, there is also a um, menu entry here, which is called content hosts. Um, and content hosts is basically an entry Cotello uh, maintains um, with all those, you know, subscription information. So all the, uh, all the, information about the, about the host in regard to content, basically. So as you can see, this, uh, this one has been uh, connected to library and uh, there's a couple of information here. You can actually s uh, list install packages. Subscription Manager provides also uh, information about packages. So we can even, even if the host is turned off, you can easily check if this host is vulnerable. So that's pretty much it. That is uh, how you manage uh, CentOS 8 stream with Cotolo and Foreman. I hope this was useful um, and um, see you around.